do this in English. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, hopefully in English, or have a translator. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Git. And the thing is with Git is that um, when people talk about Git, ah, fuck it. I'm not showing the right one. Okay, perfect. So uh, when people talk about Git, oftentimes they think of this. And the thing is that Git, uh, you know, Laurent just talked about it. I, I sort of understood some of it. Pretty good, yeah. And uh, w w when, we, when we start using Git for a lot of serious stuff, um, we kind of feel like this is a better representation of how Git is. I'm going to use a lot of the pictures from Big Lebowski. If you haven't seen the movie Big Lebowski, you should see it. It's a fantastic movie. So all of the references are from it. Yes? Okay. Uh. Same thing. Okay, so I'm going to use a lot of references from Big Lebowski. You should watch the Big Lebowski at the end of this, or just at the end of the, the day instead of this talk. Um, and I, I really love Git, and there's a lot of reasons why you would love Git too. First of all, it's fast. It is very fast. Um, it is decentralized, which is a completely different structure when suddenly no one is the top brass. There is no uh, single entity that centralizes all of the information which you still could have, but it would be by convention. And by default, everything is decentralized, which is a very, very good thing. It is also uh, very fast. I don't know if I mentioned that it's fast, but it is. It has a very small footprint, uh, memory size, so it takes much less, uh, even in, um, in uh, disk size, because there was uh, one check they did. They imported, they cloned the entire repository of I think it was GNOME, and the subversion single checkout took more disk space than the entire history in Git, because SVI has a ton of uh, metadata and Git doesn't. So Git even takes much less in disk space, even if it takes the entire history. I, it's also fast, right? Um, it has cheap branching, which means that when you branch stuff, you can delete them and you can play around with them and they don't cost you much. Sometimes they don't cost you anything. It's Some of this is because it is decentralized. Um, some of it is because simply how branches work internally. And um, it has uh, the staging area, often called the index, which is fantastic because then you can do a lot of other stuff that you can't do with um, other systems. And I, lastly, of course, it is fast, okay? So this is an example of the <coughs> sorry of the um, the index. What's called is the staging area, and what you can see here is that you have three steps here. The first one is the working directory, which is what you see all the time. The second one is the staging area, the index. Lastly, the repository itself. The staging area allows you to set up things, put them on the stage to be committed and then commit them. When you do a git add, you're actually just staging things. When you do a commit, you move from the staging area to the git repository. When you do a git commit and a file name or a path, you're actually circumventing the index and doing a one straight line of both staging and committing. And people often don't understand why you would do this, because in every other system, you just commit. That's it. Well, the difference is that I can actually add to the staging area some files but keep other files untouched, even though they have changes in them. Additionally, I can add chunks of content. So I can go over a file and say, this is just debug statements. I don't want you to add this. I do want you to add this because this is the feature they did. And then I want to just commit that instead of the entire file, which is very helpful. I oftentimes have debug statement when I'm working on something and I want to add the chunks that I know I did right. And I can add them until I'm done and then I'll just commit them. Um, so, and it's actually even more powerful because when you add a chunk, you can even edit what's going to be in the index, even if it's not in the directory. So it's just a small example. Now, the thing with Git is that a lot of people think, you know, it's very cool, but it's just, you know, like your opinion, man. Um, and again, Big Lebowski. Because um, it's... It's confusing, and this is usually stuff that, that you can hear from people say. Okay, these are actual quotes I got from people. Um, checkout has too many usages. Have you ever seen that one? Have you ever thought that, that you have too many checkouts? You can do checkout this, checkout that, checkout that, and it's just, uh, it, there is no single usage for checkout. Um, merge conflicts, they are very annoying, they're very difficult. 
to handle sometimes. Um, people who are afraid of reset because they don't know what it does. Um, branches confuse me. Uh, I've heard that quite often. Um, this is a quote uh, I got from someone on the street. Uh, who the hell are you? What the fuck do you want? Um, he didn't really know what give was, so he just got mad. Um, and of course, <coughs> uh, what the hell does rebase do? Which no one seems to know. So all these things actually lead us to think of Git as something that is very confusing, very difficult, it's not straightforward, doesn't make sense. But the thing is that Git is actually very simple. It is very, very simple. Linus describes Git as the stupid content tracker. And it's not just because Git in English also means stupid, but also because it is fairly simple. It does sophisticated things, but it doesn't in a very simple way. The structure internally is really, really, really simple. And this is the best way to describe Git, as far as I know. Git is basically this bucket, and this bucket has a bunch of stuff in it, okay? And those stuff have pointers. That's it. And everything that you use in order to contact or, or to work with these things in the bucket is pointers, just different types of pointers. Now, when I tell people this, they usually respond with this. And I'll go, I'm going to explain what I mean by this, OK? So first of all, a few pointers in Git. The first pointer in Git that you're probably familiar with is the commit ID. So when you make a commit, the commit ID is no longer the stupid serial number that doesn't mean any fucking thing other than how many commits there were, but it is actually an ID that identifies not only that commit, but all of this commit's history. So if that history changes, that pointer has a different name. It has a different commit ID, that commit, and then it represents a different history. But you can use that commit ID as a pointer to do a bunch of these operations. I'm going to go over some of these operations and how they work. Another one is head. Head is probably uh, the most confusing pointer in Git because head is contextual. Head is never really the same commit. Head basically says, I am the last commit in a branch. Moreover, it's an alias to the branch. And that's why it's confusing because when you're a branch uh, master, which is just the default one, head will be the last commit. If you are on branch feature, head will be the last commit. If you are on branch fix, head will be the last commit. It is always the last commit. That it's very contextual to what branch you are on. The commit ID never changes unless the history changes. So you can move between branches as much as you want. That ID stays the same for the entire repository. But if you are in different branches, head will change and reflect the last commit. There's the branch name. The branch is just a pointer. People confuse that all the time. They think branches are directories. They're not. Branches are just pointers. That's it. And it's a pointer that you can add, you can delete, you can play with it. But it's a pointer nonetheless. Just like the commit ID and just like the head, it just had different usages. And of course, the tag, which is a commit. Uh, it's a, I'm sorry. It's a pointer to a commit. And this is something you usually want to keep. So it's when you made a certain release. You would put a tag on it, it's like a label, and then you want to be able to use that pointer throughout the life of the repository. You can always delete it and add it again, but generally this is like a label you want to put there and keep there forever. But these are all just pointers. And what I'm going to show is how the commands in Git work with all of these pointers, and with, except for one or two cases, they work literally with all of them. Oftentimes, the confusion that we have is that we think that they're not equal, so we don't know that it's actually doing the same thing. So the, pointer, the pointers are used by the commands. That's basically it. I'm going to give you an example, git branch. So git branch, what it does is you call git branch and you give it two pointers. One is optional. The first pointer basically says, this is a pointer I would like to create to the um, commit that I'm on right now. I want to create another pointer to this current commit. The second pointer, you could say, well, I actually want to create a pointer to whatever that point's on. So if I do, um, right, so I give you a pointer name, you create a pointer with this name to the second pointer, and because it is optional, the implicit is that it's usually head, basically where I'm at right now, right? So these are two examples, and they confuse people sometimes. So you do git branch, new branch. And what this does, it says, I want you to create a pointer called new branch, and I want it to point to head. 
which means where I am right now. That's it. If you do get branch, new branch, and then some other pointer, it could be a branch, it could be a commit ID, it could be head, it could be head caret, which means one above where I'm at, all of these. It just says create a new pointer to whatever this is pointing at. That's it. That's all it is. Checkout. Checkout confuses people a lot because people think that checkout has like four or five different usages. They're actually all one. They're just different pointers. That's all. So checkout is you get a pointer. The default would be head, just like previously. And you find the commit it points to. If it's a commit ID, it will be that. If it's a branch, it will be to some commit. It, if it's um, a tag, it will be to some commit. And what you do is make the directory, the working directory, which we saw when we saw the drawing with the index and everything, it makes the current directory reflect that. So once you do this, it basically changes the files in the directory to reflect whatever it points to. That's basically it. Or it could make a certain path reflect that. So if I'll have <coughs> git checkout some pointer and a certain path, it will say, well, I'm going to make this file reflect it, not the entire directory. Because the default for path is here. These are a few examples that all do the exact same thing. They just use different pointers. So if I do get checkout file, it's actually saying, I want you to check out file.txt from head. I want you to make file.txt reflect head. You could say the same thing here. Get checkout head file.txt. You could say check out this commit ID. And then what happens is that it makes the directory reflect that commit ID. But because that doesn't have any special pointers to it, it will be a detached head. It will now be head again, because head is always the last thing, but it creates a detached head. Um, check out in branch name, you're basically making the entire, direct, the entire tree reflect whatever the branch is pointing on. With dash b, you're creating it and then doing it. Same thing. Yes? What is what? The not everyone at the same time? What does it mean, detached head? Oh, detached head. So when you, when you do a checkout for a commit ID, so let me say differently. Um, OK, when I do this, I check out, I make the, the, a single file reflect what is in head. But when I do this, and there is no file path, it actually has to make the entire tree reflect this. Now, if I give some branch name, Instead of a commit ID, it says, OK, well, there's a pointer to it. That's great. New branch. But when I give a commit ID, there is no pointer to that commit ID. So what it does is create a new branch for this commit ID. But be and that means that now head is pointing to this new created branch. But because you didn't give any name to it, it's detached. It's not connected to anything else. There's no other pointers to it. Reset, I give you a pointer. You make head point to it. That's it. It just moves head around. It literally just moves the, the pointer. So, <clears throat> give reset head, and you can just move head around. This is an example where I move head one layer up. This is when I move head to a very specific commit, so I can move it forward, backwards, whatever I want. It's kind of like time travel, which the dude would say far out. All right. And rebase, rebase, I love rebase. Rebase works like this. I give you a branch pointer. You check out that branch. Then you cherry pick, which means applying patches, of the branch that I was in, on uh, the commits on the branch that I was in on this new one. Then you change my branch pointer to it. So I'll give an example. If I'm on new feature, and I do rebase master, what it does is check out master, cherry pick on top of master all of these new commits without moving the master pointer, and then it changes the new feature pointer to that last one. So here's how it would look like. If before I had D, E, F, G, and then A, B, C that came from here. If I want to rebase topic from master, what I want to do is actually take F, and take G and put them here in between. So it will be D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Then A, B, C, it's as if they started from here. I'm basically moving this line over here. 
just like you see it here. So what it does is actually, whoop, whoop, sorry. What it does is check out master, apply A, B, C, and then move topic to that. This is how it looks like. Master is still on G, but topic is on A, B, C. Now, <coughs> because we apply them, their commit IDs have to be different because commit IDs always reflect the entire history. So if previously A was called A because it had D and E before, now it has F and G, which means it's no longer A. It's some different commit ID. It's a hash. So now it will be this thing instead, A and a tick. Same with B, same with C, because their history changed. The commit ID has to change too. Um, that's basically rebase. It just moves this line over here. There's a ton of benefits for it, which I will not cover here. But that really is all that rebase does. So I don't know how many have seen, how many have seen Big Lebowski? Oh, fantastic. So you all like this, right? right? This is good. I love this. I, this is the best slide I've ever made for a presentation. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's a few stuff in Git that I think are very difficult for people to understand, but they're actually very, very simple if you think about them as pointers. Uh, some, I, I, I hope, maybe, maybe it isn't true. Um, and sometimes when I give talks, I tend to swear. I didn't do it this time, but sometimes I do. And then I found this one. I thought this would just be such a good thing to put in. Um, we asked him, why do you have to swear all the time? And he basically responds with, what the fuck are you talking about? Which is like talking to me. Um, so yeah, that's, and this is the second best slide I've ever made. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Gentleman in the first row. I guess that's a question for you and maybe for Laurent. Uh, that's about branch. Uh, Please approach the stage. So I, I don't think there is any way uh, a word in uh, Git to say what is, a, what is a branch. So you know, what is the purpose of, of a specific branch? Uh, so how can you add that convention uh, to Git? You know, for example, in Perl 6, there is, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't 20, know. 30 branch. And uh, I, 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 have no, I have no way to know what is the purpose of a specific branch? Yeah, you cannot add a, a description to the branch name. Yeah. As far as I know. Right. You, so you can do it for, uh, for the tags, but not for the branch. So is there a tool that impose that convention, convention you, on you can first a branch. You, you can first a uh, naming convention with, uh, for instance, with, with tools uh, like Gitulite. Uh, you, you cannot uh, force people to use this name for the branch, but you can prevent them to push other names, so which no, my, in my them is the same. My question is, uh, so uh, you I want to know the purpose of a specific branch. So th that information must be... Ma uh, make the branch name meaningful. Yes. Um, this, is this is basically a matter of a convention. Yeah. It's, a, it's text. I'm going to show you one example, which we use in Dancer. Um, this is... Okay, so... Uh, ah! Thank you. Wow, this is good. Um, so in the answer, you can actually see that our branches, I'll show this. So our branches are actually, they have very specific prefixes. And those prefixes explain to us what those are. And we keep those when we merge. So PR means pull request. Docs means documentation. Bug fixes or fix. We have either one. Um, Feature, we sometimes use feature. Tests, uh, this is fix, and there's somewhere tests. Features, we put under features. And there's one thing that is very confusing to people. When you do a merge, if there is no conflicts, and if they start from the same place, it will do a fast forward merge, which basically means you see all of the commits ahead, and then you don't have the branch name anymore. But here, you can see that this all looks like bubbles, what's called bubble merges. Because we make sure that when we merge, we actually do git merge dash dash no dash ff. Basically saying, I want you, even though you can put, even though you can put this commit just here instead and just have one and two, I want you to create another commit which says merge 
branch and the name of the branch. And then we know this one where it came from. We know that all of these changes came from this one. We know that these changes, all these, came from a branch called feature slash common middleware. So right. you, you don't impose to uh, the first commit of a branch to describe what is the branch, for example? So that would no. be a convention. No, we wouldn't do that. Our, our approach would basically mean, uh, would, would be make the branch name reflect what this branch does and prefix it with the type of change that you're making. Fix, feature, release. Our releases are in a branch. So if you take a look at our release, you'll see, um, where is my, there we go. Damn you. Release slash version. So, okay, do you, have, do you have any tools that enforce that convention on programmers to, to refuse? Gitflow uh, does that. Gitflow is a command line tool that creates branches, merges branches, does all of these nice stuff. And by default, when you say new branch, you give it a name, it will create branch slash. And when you do a fix or a hotfix, it will be hotfix slash. And that's default. Okay, thank you. Yes. Welcome. Um, I think there's time for one more question. Uh, one question about your branches. Uh, I see you got to sit down and raise your hand. I can't, I can't <laughs> even see you. It's not, it's not that I Okay. Uh, I see, so you, you force the uh, merge with uh, no fast forward, so you can keep the branch name in the merge commit. So th after that, you remove the branch? Oui, monsieur. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Any we, we won't keep branches around, yeah. but we will provide for this branch for this commit, the merge commit will have a tag. So okay. if I'll just do git tag, uh, yeah. Uh, why do I have to write so shitty? Um, so this is when we started to do it. You can see that each one has its own tag, and that tag is a pointer to the commit, which was the merge of the branch that did the release. So you can check out that tag, and then you know it's that version, which is super useful for us. We do testing. Very much. Lastly? Uh, do you have uh, this convention documented somewhere on the Dancer site? I th I, we used to have a few documentations on how to... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think this Git guide might be the one that we're using to show um, contributors. So, uh, set file type markdown, I think. Ah, there we go. So, this shows s the convention that we use with a lot of things. Um, you can see here that it says, please check out this is PR, um, stuff like that. Um, I don't know if we're covering exactly, you know, the entire scope of how we do this. Uh, we generally tend to accept patches whichever fucking way you provide them. Yeah, so you, you could you said fucking. I yes. expected that. You could you could give us this. You, you can give us patches to the answer with like crib notes. You can just send us a text with a patch. It's fine. Like a, any any way you're going to submit, we'll fix it. So we're not really forcing so users. So that to was do that. a fucking good talk. <laughs> Thank you very fucking much. Yeah. Any other question? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Soya. Yeah.